Kim is 21 and $26,000 in credit card debt. Oh, you're $50,000 in debt right now. Robert is 20, has already ruined his credit rating. Pasta's cheap. Not with interest, it isn't. They owe thousands on credit cards. You get hooked on it. Imagine, if you will, filing for bankruptcy before you hit 24 years old. Under 21 and drowning in debt. You were like a slave to your bills. I got my first credit card when I was about 13 or 14. She once charged a single burrito. I was hungry. You would charge a 25 cent gum? Meet the one money expert I believe can save them. Each and every one of us can be a money magnet. We can be the master of our own financial destinies. You're the one, Susie. You are the one girl. Coming up. Talking about money, how to have more of it. Hi. Hi. How many of you are spending more than you make in here? <laughs> you are? And why, why are you doing that? Any particular reason why? Because what? <laughs> You're buying Beanie Babies? You're going into debt with Beanie Babies. <laughs> You're spending more than you make. Spending more than you make. And why are you doing that? Um, Stand up in that pretty green uh, <laughs> shirt. Did you buy that for this show? Should I lie? <laughs> yes, I did. No, you, you should never lie. So did you buy it oh, for the yes, show? Yes, I did. And so it's work for you. Yeah, it worked. Because <laughs> it's a way, I mean, it's the only way when you're, especially in college, to have money. Is I mean, what? To charge things. It's to charge to things. Buy? And so you spend a lot more than you make. Yeah. And then when that bill comes, don't you have that horrible feeling of like, don't you hate bills? Yeah. Like you want to cry the day all the bills come. It's like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> but you knew that you did it. Yeah. Uh, all of our guests today are young adults, most under 21, and in some serious debt. Uh, for this section here, it's almost two hundred thousand dollars. Yikes! Yikes! Oh, look at you. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are y'all are doing it out there. Okay. That's almost a quarter million dollars. And get this, most of them don't even have jobs yet to pay it off. Uh, let's meet a few of them. Kenyana is 21 and uh, $10,000 in credit card debt and another $18,000 on a new car. She once charged a single burrito. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a burrito? I was hungry. <laughs> College she, would do that to yeah. you. She wasn't even hungry. She was hungry. <laughs> hungry. I, and you I, charged a burrito? I charged burritos. I charged gas. I charged school supplies. I charged to pay some of my bills when I get into a bind. I charged everything. And what's your credit card limit? Um, most of my credit card limits are like 1000 like twelve. Most of your credit cards. Yeah, I How have. How many do you have? I have a lot of credit cards. I have eight major ones, and I have about three minor ones. <laughs> do you know her? No, but this is, it's really, I, I can't mean, believe they, you did it's, it's all a part of consumerism. You know, um, credit, credit cards. It's a credit part card, of consumerism. It's a part of consumerism. What about pay your rhythm? I, oh, 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 I pay. Uh -huh. I, I pay dearly. Uh -huh. I work hard to pay my credit card bills, and I'm proud of the fact that I have a high credit rate. I have A1 credit. It's just a struggle to have A1 credit. It's a struggle. It's a struggle to pay the bills. It's a struggle. Eight credit cards. Do you have eight credit cards? No. No. But yeah. see, we, I go to college. It's like you, you go to a lot of those tables, you fill out for the credit cards, they give them to you. My freshman year, I got three credit cards. And every year after that, they're sending them to me in the mail. If you don't have any money, somebody's sending you a credit card in the mail, they go your way out right there, you know? And you use them. But aren't you supposed to be going to college to, like, you know, acquire some kind of knowledge. That helps me. Yeah, that, that helps does. me go through college. I mean, I support myself on those credit cards. Mm -hmm. I maintain my GPA. I work three jobs most of the time. This is my first semester that I haven't worked more than two jobs just mm -hmm. to pay my credit card bill. But you're struggling to pay, to keep... I'm struggling to okay. pay them. Kim is 21 and $26,000 in credit card debt. She even charged the down payment for a new car. You charge? You can charge a down payment? Absolutely. When did that start happening? Um, it all started when I was in college. Mm -hmm. I was 18 years old, got my first two credit cards when I went to school, ended up dropping out of school, came home, moved back in with my parents, 
Um, I got a full-time job, was living comfortably, got more credit card offers in the mail. I kind of looked at it as free money. Uh -huh. um, moved out. All of got, you are looking at it as free money. So I see you yeah. nodding your head. It's not free. It's not free yet, but go ahead. Right, but that's how I was looking at it when I'd get these offers in the mail. Um, I ended up moving out on my own, was living pretty well. I had probably about 12 credit cards and ended up unemployed for about maybe I a got month money or two. And I don't have no 12 credit cards yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it was, amazing. I was just always making the minimum payments and then more would come. It got pretty bad. And then when I became unemployed, I started taking cash advances to pay my rent, my car payments, oh, everything yeah. else. Then it starts. You're yeah. in the cycle. Yeah, Robert is 20. Bad. He's already ruined his credit rating. 20 and ruined his credit rating. He spent most of his money on expensive dinners for friends. Uh, you like to eat well? <laughs> yeah, I guess. But... No burritos, you. <laughs> no burritos. <laughs> what? The good stuff. It's the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it was like a rush, you know, and I felt very important, you know. I was like, take my friends out to dinner. I could pay. I'd be like... Oh, let me get that, or, you yeah. know, I was, I totally felt like the important one, you know, I guess that was my spotlight or whatever, you know. Getting a rush? Yeah. <laughs> off of the meal. Well, it's better the thing that's so cards. awful about charging food, I mean, it's awful to be in any kind of debt, but the awful thing is that you're paying for it, and like, what's your favorite meal? Oh, I don't know. You like Italian food? Yeah, so you go out, let's say you go out to a wonderful Italian restaurant, and the bill comes to, you know, $180 or whatever for you and all of your friends. You're paying, if you're making the minimum payment, you're still paying that, like a year later for a spaghetti dinner <laughs> that's long since gone. Right. Yeah. Pasta's cheap. Pasta's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Not with interest, it isn't. Uh, Angie is uh, 19 and $11,500 in debt although $8,000 was for trade school. She loves buying Nike shoes. So you're, you, you, well, you, got a Nike, you get a Nike fix? Well, see. <laughs> His um, is food, hers burritos, yours is... Well, basically, I mean, um, I got my first credit card when I was about 13 or 14. I forged my application, and um, they just started sending them to me in the mail, and um, sometimes I would get So at 13 or 14, how would you pay it off? Well, I was, you know, I was working, you know, I forged my birth certificate to work just so I could shop. I mean, um, shopaholic. I mean, I'm looking for a profession so I could spend someone else's money. <laughs> um, um, basically, um, I've charged newspapers. I mean, just 25 cent gum. I have money in my pocket. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll pay it later. And um, You would charge a 25 cent gum? Yeah, and um, I mean, it just got bad. Oh, boy, y'all need to be here. Eva's 19 and $10,000 in credit card debt. She's a chargeaholic, too. She once charged a soda and a pack of gum. Really? It's the college trap. As soon as you get there, they pre-approve you for, like, 100 different cards. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and, you know, it's convenient, and you don't mm -hmm. have to go to the cash machine or, like, walk a block to get it. You just give it. So it's, it's really hard. It's the college trap. Would you all agree? Yeah, you're shaking your head. Next, meet a recent college graduate who was in debt, $35,000 at age 22. Even her parents and grandparents are stalked by her debt collectors. But first, here are some signs that you or your young adult has a problem. You make only minimum payments on credit cards. Is that you guys? No, you make more than minimum. Oh, good for you. You are unsure how much you owe. You know exactly how much you owe? I make payments. You know how much you owe? A lot. You're not sure. Okay, you use rent money to pay off credit card bills. No. Oh, you're going to be homeless soon. <laughs> That's what you will be. You charge things you cannot afford. That's a sure enough sign. We'll be right back. I'm 20 years old. I have three credit cards and it took me approximately three days to max them all out. I owe about $4,000 in credit card debts. I don't know, for some reason when I pay with a credit card, I think I don't have to like pay for it. I'm just like, it's fun. But then when you get the bill, it's really sad. Imagine, if you will, filing for bankruptcy before you hit 24 years old. That's Andrea, 
who owed $35,000 at the peak of her debt. She even had a car repossessed. And she's now 24 and still paying it off. Debt collectors are now calling her mom and her grandmother to recover some of their money. And now Andrea's mother, Mary Jo, says it's strapping her for cash. How did this happen? Same story? Mm, same story, you know, credit cards, they were sending them to me. I felt that I, you know, deserved them. I should be living the life like my parents were living. And, and I wanted to, like, hurry up and be an adult. And it was just free money, you know, thrown at me, mm -hmm. you know? And I just had no idea of the ramifications that it would cause down the line, you know? And so what are the ramifications? The ramifications is that it's just a huge, huge, Burden to put on yourself emotionally because it's you make yourself old before your time. You're, I mean, you're killing yourself to pay these bills, and and it, it depresses you. I mean, I gained weight, huge amounts of weight in college. I think you know, um, it really makes you feel like a failure when you get to my point. And do, uh, you just uh, hinted at why you thought you were doing it, uh, and the reason is because what? Because I felt that. Um, I should be at least at the caliber level where my parents were at and then go from there. That I should have necessarily a better life, you know, and I'm getting these credit cards that's going to guarantee me a better life in the future. And I thought maybe it should start now. <laughs> okay. And as her mother? You have to start off someplace. I mean, we didn't get where we are by not working. We went through hard times. Uh, my husband and I went, both went to college. We've paid our dues. You have to pay your dues. You can't expect to be at the age of 24, and I'm going to say this, at the age of 45, mm -hmm. I have things because I worked. <laughs> you need to work for it. And you can't turn your back on it. And you can't say it's free money because nothing is ever free. OK, so is that something that you instilled in her earlier or that after she got up this debt? I thought I had. <laughs> I, I guess no, I didn't. No, yeah. she, no I, I have to say that, like, my parents sort of, I was very stubborn and bullheaded and independent, you know. I didn't want to hear about their stuff. I wanted to do my own thing, you know. So um, to say that they really sat down and talked to me about it, no, because I don't think they even had an idea about how much this goes on in college, you know. Oh, we had every idea. But call it, but credit cards weren't as easily available back when they were my age. Back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Back in olden days. Yes, yeah. back in olden I, days. Nineteen seventy-four. Yeah. But I. Yeah. The thing that really is. Go upsets, get my wheelchair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tell you. So well, yeah, when you were in college, they were not this accessible. Is that correct? No, they weren't as accessible. Uh, but I guess we learned from my, my parents. We bothered to take a look to see how hard our parents looked. Uh, and I don't want to take Andrea and say it's just her. I think it's a whole generation that says, e the expectation is, I will have what my parents have. Yeah, and I will have now. it now. Now. And I will exactly. have it now. Yeah. Would you all agree with that? Exactly. Yeah. Because there's so much more that. out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's That's so much like more true. accessible. Well, what, what, what would you say? Yes, ma'am. Um, most of my credit cards mostly came from all my credit cards in my house. Everything I spent mostly is in my house, and I like to go out to eat. Those are my two passions. I bought an entertainment <laughs> system, a VCR, table, bed, desk, groceries. Everything is in my house. I have really nothing to show for my credit cards, and I got them from college. I'm 18. I have seven credit cards, four are major, three are minor, and I, I can't pay for them. Okay. What's beneath all of this free willing spending? I think um, we can get to the root of it. It's not just loving nice things, as a lot of you say. It's not just loving nice meals. It's not just believing that you should have what your parents has have. The roots of overspending are formed um, in childhood. It's really how you think about money, whether you realize that or not. Just like everything in life is, it's about what you think about it, what you believe it can do for you. And we'll talk about that with Susie Orman when we come back. But first, here are some more big spenders. Back in a moment. I had to decorate my apartment, didn't have a job. So right now I'm standing at a $7,200. I have almost $2,000 in debt. My mom doesn't know that, though. <laughs> but like a total of about. $10,000 in debt. I probably owe about $3,000. I have about $5,000 in uh, credit card bills. I'm uh, 21, I'm a junior, um, but I'm not really too worried about it. Over the years,
Brothers done countless shows on money, about money, people in debt, how to make more money. And I now know that the answers to money problems are not found in little tips or little how-tos. It really goes back to the way you think about money. It's an attitude that was formed when you were a kid, when you didn't even know it was being formed, no doubt. Susie Orman is the author of Nine Steps to Financial Freedom, and she is really the first money expert I've known who explains that solving your money problems hasn't doesn't have very much to do with clipping coupons or even balancing your checkbook. It's about an attitude. It, it is. You're the one, Susie. You are the one, girl. Nine oh, steps. You're the one. You. You're the one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, since she knows more about it than I do, and nobody wants to hear about money from me, Susie, I'm going to let you have it. There you go. They're all mine. Actually, no, be before the show started, I got to talk to all of you. And the one thing that I found so fascinating about all this credit card debt you had, didn't, isn't it true most of you spend 25 to 50 percent of it on other people? No. Not on themselves, no. but on other people, buying things for people. That's what? not true of Kenyana, right? That's and a couple of other people. That's not what it's about. But that's not what it's about, that's but it's true of a few of you, yeah. however, and many of you. You spent it on your friends. You spent it on your friends. A lot of you did that, and a lot of times we do that because we want to be more, or we feel that by spending more, we are more. Now, Kiki, I know that you feel that it's not that way. I mean, we talked in the green room, and I know you said, you know, Kiki has $50,000 of credit right. card debt. And what she's concerned about is that she has a good credit card rating. Not that she has $50,000 of credit I mean, card debt. That's going to go. I mean, once I get a professional job, whereas I'm going to be getting paid and I start paying these credit cards off, that's going to go away. That storm will pass. <laughs> All right, out there, that how many of you pass. make $50,000 a year or more? Few of you. <laughs> how many years. of you could pay $50,000 of debt and pay everything else and keep your lives going. I'm and these, in college right now. But yes, sweetheart, but these off. are people with professional jobs off. who are living, who are making... I've already paid off, like, four credit... I paid off three credit cards. The only thing is, is that I don't have an income to support myself in college right now. I live off of my credit yes, cards. Yes, but it's that denial. These people are professionals. That denial? Listen to me, Kiki, I beg of you. <laughs> I really do. No, she is, like, queen of denial right now. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know and it's so amazing. We all see it, but you don't see it. Wait till you get home and you'll play this tape no, and you'll see it. Not. I'm just telling you, I live off You don't my think you're card. in denial. These people probably don't live off their credit cards. I virtually no. charge everything. This no. one lives off your credit card? No, I don't. You don't? No one. But I make a good salary. I'm a professional nurse. And I was in that trap. And at 45, I can say that it is very, very difficult to ever pay those cards off. I've mm -hmm. paid them all off and been in debt again. I'm getting out of debt now, and I, don't, I have t cut up every card that I own. I will never do that again. Yes. And I'm making excellent decisions. But that's okay. You, 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 I, I think, I think Kenyana's fabulous because lots of people are exactly where she is, and so it's a wonderful Thing teaching to example, do. yeah. But a lot of a lot of us felt that we're less than now. I mean, even as I was talking to some of you, you were saying that you feel that you're not as good as others because you owe money. And the thing wow. that I'm going to say time and time again is that it's not that you're a bad person because you have you don't have money. You're simply a person who maybe has managed their money badly, and there is a tremendous difference between it. Also, I have to tell you. And Oprah's going to love this one. There is a direct correlation between our weight and the amount of money we owe. Jennifer, yes? Really Kelly, I'm sorry. Kelly, you were, or no, it was Jennifer. Yeah, yes. That. Jennifer was telling me that as her debt increased, so did her weight. Andrea, is that true as well? Yes, a little bit, yes. That, that ad, is that true, Nicole? Yeah, I would say that. I also agree with that. Yeah. But it's also college, too, you know, the freshman yeah. 15 sort of and thing. things like that. So, and, you know, <laughs> and, yeah, so yeah. how you feel, Kim, Kim has claimed bankruptcy. How do you feel about your life now, Kim? I wish I had done things differently. Are you proud of who you are um, right now? Do you feel as good as your other friends? No. I mean, I still struggle with all the consequences and everything else. And you, Rob? I don't. You don't? <laughs> I feel and awful. we say, where did this come from? Why did it start? Andrea's mother. One thing, and this is fascinating, as I was talking to Andrea, did you know 
then Andrea knew how much money that you and your husband made because she saw it on your financial aid applications. I know. And when she saw the amount of money coming in, she thought she had the right to let all that money go out. Yeah, because the you have a thing... different mentality when you're spending so much. It's like you're all about money. You keep spending. The more you spend, the more you're about money, you know, if, especially if you're not earning it for yourself. Like, the thing that scares me about this girl over here is Kenyana? that... Kiki. Kiki, is that your name? That's your Kiki? nickname. Is that I worked three jobs when I was in college. I was paying $1,300 a month for I my credit too. card bills. And let me tell you, girlfriend, it will take you 30 years to pay off the amount of money you got on your you. credit cards. But I it will. I you're not going to get a job. What college pencil. students are getting paid out of college paid, are 20, 20 to $30,000. You're living unrealistically. You, you gotta cards. sit back and I'm look not, at it. Uh, no. But here's, I have a wait till you get in the real world, honey. It's a way different thing. Cause I'm, I'm there the now. It scares the heck out of me. I'm in the real world now. I pay my bills every month on time. I've been I living in the real jobs. world since I was 18. I work but midnights. You... I go to college during the day. All of my bills I pay on time. I sit down. I write how much I owe. Who I owe it to, I make sure those people I pay. I know, but you were like a slave to your bills. Yeah. I mean, but that's, that's life. I was. But like, you're, that's not life. I'm telling you, it's that's not, not I made life. the bills. I have to pay them. I don't want my credit rating to be destroyed. Just I know, but okay, I'm this is the point. Then we're gonna, gonna go to break. Yeah. It's happen. okay if you're in denial. That's okay. You're gonna see it. You one day you will see it. <laughs> There's no question you're gonna come out of it at some point. But it's what Susie was saying earlier. You, you your whole thinking is so off because you're, what you're saying is because you can pay the payments every month that that makes it okay. No, that's not what I'm saying. That is not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is if you get these credit cards, you know you have to pay your bill on the 30th of each month. But you know do you want to be a slave? Do you want to be? What I'm saying is right now that's what I have to do because. I'm in school, and that's the path that I, that's the bed I made. So when you I'm get like, out, you can claim bankruptcy out, like I'm doing. Well, and let I me tell you. I would never file bankruptcy. It, I but look at all the people in the audience that are only on making 50,000. It's going to take you a long time. That has oh, nothing to do to with say me. Something here. I'm in the real world now. I, I, I pay quit my bills. school so I could pay off my bills. Well, I didn't have to I'm making $34,000. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I'm making $34,000 a year right now between my job and doing some extra work on the side. I coach football. And I'm making $34,000 a year now. I'm taking home a nice paycheck. I am lucky after I pay my bills if I have 35 bucks a week to live on. Yep. I don't know. I planned out my stuff already. Yeah, it was, and, it was, yeah. and, <laughs> and I know what I've been paying. What okay, I've been so, okay, so let me far. just say this. How much money are you expecting? What's your major? My major is speech communication. Okay, what are you, how much money are you planning 60. on making when you graduate? So I know the salaries. It's starting out low. And I know right now I have to at least make... So 20... you're $50,000 in debt right. right now. And I know already right now that I have to make $27,000 just to keep my head above water. That's if I get a job. But that doesn't include your, 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 your rent. That and... does include my rent. The only thing it doesn't include right now is food, but I'll work on that part later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work That's on that Kiki's later. That's because only paying the oh. minimum on her credit well, card payments. But my bills will be paid, and I won't and be And she's paying a 24 percent oh. interest rate. But you got to pay that for what you need right now. Right. If you don't she's going to have a nervous right. breakdown have like I did. Else. She's gonna. That's what's going to happen because, I mean, I graduated college and I, that's I mean, you. I feel bad for her. I want her to be happy. And I think that, like, if she didn't have this burden It'll on the come. back, she'd be I'll happy. I'll tell you what, let's it's move not a on from Kiki because to... Kiki's not ready yet. That's yeah. right. Would y'all agree? <laughs> Kiki's not ready. So let's try to speak to people. Kiki's not ready, and listen, call me, call me, <laughs> wherever I am in the world when it hits you. <laughs> no, okay. Me okay. And her when we come back, we're going to we talk to people who really do want to get it, who want to come out of denial, and who want to improve their lives and their attitudes about money and not be struggling and be a slave to their credit card debt. Another step is being honest, which is a lot harder than it sounds. Parents, are you covering up for your teenagers? facing your money problems head on. When we come back, uh, we're gonna talk about that. But first, here are more quick guidelines from Susie. Cut up all the credit cards, just cut them up. Don't hide. Uh, face it to erase it, she says. Pay more than the minimum monthly balance. Call Consumer Credit Counseling Service. We'll be back for people who are ready. What do you want to say? Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say to Kiki that... Um, and then was... we're moving on from Kiki. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was you, and I am $145,000 in debt. Oh. And 
from college, college loans and credit cards. And what had happened was is that I had planned when I graduated, which I had graduated in December, um, to pay that off with, I thought, oh, I'll be making 40000 a year. Because you had your plan. Yeah, yep. I had my plan. Um, I got pregnant, and my baby was premature, and I had no insurance. Um, I am very much in debt. There's no way that I will ever work out my plan. Um, cars break, things happen, and you just you can't plan anything. From week to week, everything could change. I mean, I know that. Okay, Kiki knows that. that. <laughs> We're moving on from Kiki because you can only receive it when you're ready to receive it. So there are a lot of people who are interested. You, would you all agree with that? Yeah. Kiki will be fine. What do you want to say? Because we're talking to young people today who are already uh, thousands and thousands of dollars in debt. Susie uh, Orman, who's one of the best experts at, at getting what money really means in our lives, wrote um, nine uh, steps to financial freedom, <laughs> not being a slave to your debt. And uh, we're trying to help people get out of their debt because it's a, another way of thinking about your life and money. Susie, you got it. Now, you know, what I want to say is, again, you are all so lucky. They're going, why are we lucky? We have debt, I'll tell you, because you're still young enough that by the time you get out of it, and here you are showing the world that you can handle it, you're going to change it, you're going to do it. Don't you all feel that way right now? That's why you're here. By the time you're out of this debt, you'll be 24, you'll be 25, and you have a whole future ahead of you. Do you know if you save $100 a month starting at the age of 25, rather than making those credit card payments, you make a $100 a month payment to yourself in a good no loan mutual fund. You do it every month until you're 65. At a 12% return, you'll have $1 million. They have a future. They're still young enough. So, you know, we were talking about earlier, what were the blessings in this? Andrea, what were, you told me there was an incredible blessing in the fact that you've had a client, you know, that this I've, is happening to you. I mean, you're totally right. I've become so thrifty. Every penny matter because it's my money it's cash it is my money and i'm gonna spend it and make sure that it goes to something i really need i really 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 want and i've learned to manage my money so much better from it instead of being in the position as we've heard from uh, older people here today you know back in the day uh <laughs> that uh, so many and you all are saying some of the same things even in your 20s you get all this stuff these things where is it and where is it doesn't mean anything hasn't really brought any value to your experience as a human being see that's what i'm worried about i'm worried i'm worried about when i get my salary paying job me being able to manage my money that's what i'm worried about because right now you don't have a salary paying what do you no I, well i just graduated in, de in december and mm -hmm. i'm still interviewing you know for positions but, you know, I, I expect to get, you know, maybe about 28000 You know, and How maybe, in debt are you right now? Well, <laughs> man, I feel so much better since I've come here. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was depressed, you know, whatever. But um, I'm only about 6000 in credit card debts. I mean, I have student loans, but, mm -hmm. you know, credit card debts about 6000 or so. And see, that's the other thing, Nicole, what she's trying to say to everybody is we never tell anybody how much we have. She feels better now because <laughs> she knows that Kiki has $50,000. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> When you start talking about it and you know that you are more than the negative balance on your credit card statement. And statements, we don't tell people because we, we develop ashamed. a sense of shame about it. And right? we're not that. We are far more than that. You know, Nicole was telling me earlier mm -hmm. that when the last show that we did, Oprah, when she heard us say, you're not a bad person because you have credit card debt, that you're a good person, that started to turn her life around. Mm -hmm. That she started to feel more powerful. And with that power, money is starting to come to her. She now has the power to go out and look for a job wow. and to change that. Okay, how do you begin to change, though? Because as we all know, maybe you haven't really had click with you yet, that you're, the way you spend money is rooted in what you were taught about money as a child. It's not only what you were taught about it, it's how you feel about it. None of us were taught a thing about money. The one thing that I just want to say is these kids are going to the higher education learning centers of our world, correct? And that's who's giving them their credit cards. Are that no, they don't teach about money. And these institutions are actually ruining these kids' lives before it even starts. Do you know that the colleges sell the list of these kids' names to the credit card companies? Yes, they do. Yes, they, they do. sure do. That they get these cards mailed to them sure in do. their mailbox with their name on it yeah. before they, you know, how do they, how do the colleges know that these kids are going to the University of Illinois? Who is it from Southern California? You. Yep. She, 
She got, I got an alumni card, and I only went for my freshman year of school. I've, yeah. I'm not even planning on graduating from there, but I have an alumni card. I walk around with this. She U was U sent card. the card, not an application, but she was sent the card. How dare those higher institutions of learning do that to our yeah. children? What do you want to say? I, I'm Kamika's mother, uh -huh. and she was a like she said she was a freshman at USC. They gave her an American Express card. <laughs> American Express card. Unlimited. She didn't, have, she didn't have a job. She was just there from Illinois to California. They had the table set up there. She mm -hmm. comes home on break. She has it. She doesn't have it anymore because she couldn't <laughs> afford to. After buying, 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 and I think they should take those tables and booths away from freshman yeah. orientation. <laughs> On, uh, you know, through college uh, with just money and a credit, getting a credit card was such a big thing. Why do we need them? We don't I mean, need them. But I think part of it, though, is that um, as we get, for our generation, the whole delayed gratification, I think a lot of times we live in the moment. Although yeah. we're going to be there for four years and we want to get out and we have all these plans, we also have the plan of, oh, it's Friday, I want to go to this party. And I think <laughs> a lot of times we don't think, okay, it's Friday and you're going to go to that party. What are you going to eat on Monday? You've spent all your meal tickets, you just bought this outfit. Now you don't have anything for food and don't let, you know, you need a, some paper for paper or something like that. We, it's the whole delayed gratification. We don't well, it's have like, I would like to know what do we do after the fact? I mean, I'm a recent college graduate. Um, freshman year, same thing, same story. I got tons of credit cards. My junior year, I went to Fashion Institute of Technology in New York and that just did it. I just blew out, you know, all my credit cards. Okay, now I have a great job. I'm 23. Now what do I do? All my bills are coming now and I'm living from paycheck to paycheck. So it, do you have advice? What do you do now? Welcome you know, what do to I do? the world. <laughs> it's like, but no, it's like I learned. I know. My parents taught me. Uh, you know, I, I'm grateful to them. I know this now. I'm not spending any more credit. I cut them all up. I'm finished. But now what? Right. So <laughs> now what now is the next segment after this commercial break? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about. Now what? We'll be right back. I worked in a booth for a major credit card company and uh, we worked for a week and a half. Uh, they offered us points uh, to get as many students as we could to sign up. And the ploy is uh, you just run up to the student and say, you know, I'm a student, uh, you're a student, I wouldn't try to shaft you. They're just like bait and we're just sharks. We go in and we take, we take it all and that's where you get most of your, your, uh, your sign ups. And you exploit them all, I guess, if you want to call it that. When we first went to the commercial break, we, you asked the question, what now? Right. Now that you're getting it, you, you understand that you shouldn't have been doing this, you shouldn't have accepted the first right. recruitment and so forth, what now? Now, the first thing that you do is you faced it. You know that you're more than your credit card debt. You should be proud of the fact that you're working and everything's going right. Now, I, you know, the question that I asked Krisham at the, at the break was, what is the interest rate that she's paying? And she didn't really know. So we have to get honest about what do we really have going on. And what I would like to see you do is go to the Consumer Credit Counseling Service. Many of you have already gone to them. I believe Kelly works for them. No, no who works for them? I work for Ameridet. You mm -hmm. work and for Ameridet, it, which is a nonprofit debt counseling service. Mm -hmm. And so Kim works for them. And I started working there um, maybe a couple months after I filed bankruptcy. And I didn't even know that companies like that existed. I probably would have never filed bankruptcy. Wow. So it's the Consumer Credit Counseling Service, a nonprofit organization organization set up to consolidate your loans for you, wow. to lower your interest rates for you. Kiki, I know you don't want to, but if you did want Leave to... Leave Kiki alone. <laughs> <laughs> Kiki, I don't know what got into me, Even Kiki, Kiki's I'm... parents and grandparents say, Kiki is not getting it no time soon. Okay. I'll Leave never Kiki give alone. up on you, Kiki. I'm going to follow you to the day you're out of debt. But anyway, but so go to them. Don't do these consolidation loans where these companies no. charge you a fee to right. consolidate for you. It is such a ripoff. Do a cons do uh, you know? Let the Consumer Credit Counseling Service do it for you. And, and how are they different than some other companies? They're company? a nonprofit corporation set up as a section of the United States government. They take your money. They have already negotiated with these credit card companies for you. They lower the rates. Jennifer, you're yeah. using them. They're, they are they are great. They depending on who you got the credit card from depends on how much the interest rate gets lowered. Unfortunately, I got suckered into some good ones that they just they don't pull very much interest off of it. But now that bill, when it comes in every month, I can say that's one less bill I need to pay. And the biggest thing that they did that was the big eye opener for me was they gave me a sheet and they called it your budget sheet. Mm -hmm. They listed things on there that I would never think to make a budget for. I mean. I I would never think to make a budget to get a haircut or to, you know, 
any, to go on vacation. And, and reality is when you go on vacation, you're spending minimum, even a great deal on a college spring break is 500 bucks. Yeah. And you can't charge that. I mean, if you're already in debt, you don't want to charge more. I mean, my spring break this year, I spent the last year saving $900 so that I could go to Mexico. I gave up haircuts, I gave up manicures, I gave up my love for jewelry, everything, so that I could go on spring break and be a college kid for just okay, one Okay, so the what week. now is go to the consumer go credit. Go to consumer credit counseling. I, make sure you don't use your credit cards anymore. Because what no. they do then is help you lower, lower the credit. Lower your rates, they set up a payment plan, they close your accounts for you, and you feel like you have a partner that you're not alone. And when yes. you feel powerful, money's attracted to you. One of the other key essential things to do believe it or not, is to give money away. Right. Yeah. So let me, yeah, all of you are going to go, how do you give money away? I'm tens of thousands of dollars in debt. Why? You Let's talk about that all when right. we come back. All right. When we come back. Law of Attraction, back in a moment. I don't know if you figure this out or not. Maybe you have to be, for actually, you don't have to be 40. That there, there are physical laws that rule the planet that are also spiritual laws. The law of attraction is one of the strong laws, physical laws, which is also spiritual law of the planet. It, you know, it's like the golden rule. It's what you put out comes back. What you put out comes back. We've seen it multiplied a thousand, thousand, multi-thousand times over with our angel network. And it always will, but you can't put out in order to get back. Right. You have to put out to say thank you. Thank you for what you have as well as thank you for what you don't have. And if you feel so powerless in life that you don't even have enough money to give to a place of worship or a nonprofit or to some charity that you really believe in, when you hold on so tightly to that little that you think you're, you have, your hands literally aren't open to receive that which is meant to come your way. So for those of you in debt, I ask you all to go inside and think about an amount that would be respectable to you. Maybe it's a dollar. Maybe it's five. For some of you who aren't in debt, it could be $10,000. But if you made that the first thing that you did every single month, the first day of the month, to make that offering to say thank you. When you make an offering, you open up your hands. When your hands are opened, then more does come back. But again, you don't open it to have it come back. When you make an offering, you feel generous. When you feel generous, you feel powerful. And when you feel powerful, money is attracted to you like a magnet. If you have debt, if you don't have money in your lives, I really have to ask you from my heart, what are you doing? that is repelling it from you. Each and every one of us can be a money magnet. We can be the master of our own financial destinies if you would simply believe in yourself, have faith in yourself and your own thoughts, to know that everything is a blessing and it happens for the best, and to deal with your situation today from a place of power rather than a place of weakness. You know, it's, it's, that is such the key to financial freedom. I can't tell you, money will never set you free because you will live in fear of losing it if you have it, right? If you don't have money, you'll also won't be free because you'll live in fear of never having enough. It's when you have control over your thoughts and your fears about money, then you have financial freedom. You can do it. Every one of you can do it. What I would love to do is form a financial team between each and every one of these people here, between Matt and Dan and Kiki and Kim and Robert and everybody and a year from now show how their lives can be turned around simply by how they think about what's happening to them. So we can show the world that not only can we change ourselves, but we can change everything simply by thought, and then we'll come action. Uh, so how many of you are willing to be a part of that financial team? Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And I am willing to be your leader. Right? Wait a minute. Do the rest of the teammates want Kiki on the team? <laughs> Yes, they want sure. me on their team. I want Kiki on that team. We'll have a tough team, that's for sure. That's a tough team. OK, so have you all agreed that you're going to be part of the team? Then a year later, we're going to see where you are? Mm -hmm. yes. That'd be really exciting to see. And that means I have to watch over you, and we're going to do this together. And I'm telling you, together we can show the world that through taking the right steps, not only can you change your, whole, your own lives, but we can change the lives of those we come in contact with, which is greater than all the money in the world will ever buy for any of you.
what you want to say, Andrea? I keep Whatever that like is, say it when we come back. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> the possibilities are really exciting because we live in a country that has over $500 billion worth of credit card debt. And most people are tied to that debt, feeling miserable in their lives, getting more things, and filling a greater void by being surrounded by all the stuff and not being able to figure out why the stuff can't fill the hole. So what we're going to begin here is a process that Susie just came up with this brilliant idea, I think. We're going to follow these young people and uh, use them as symbols for your life. Because if they can do it, it certainly means that you can too. And um, throughout the next year, we will be looking at the progress, checking in on you. They're going to form their own financial team. Susie's going to be the coach. Mm -hmm. We're not sure what Kiki is on the team. <laughs> but uh, Susie's book is called Nine Steps to Financial Freedom, which is what we've been talking about here today. Freeing yourself from financial debt. Freeing, it, the key word is free. Freedom. So we look forward to following and continuing. Thank you. You're the best. Oh, thank you. I already you. told you that. You're the best. Thank you.